All right. Hey. Right? It's alarming. Hey. It's Alex and Jim. Yeah. Analyze Billy Joel lyrics. Episode. This is something we should have cleared up a long time ago. Uh, he's Jim. And you are Sorry. Alex. I'm Alex. Or um, are you also Jim and there's no Alex? I mean, I feel like I'm getting all your hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't have a room. You're just a small place in New York. There's no way you have well, enough I room. apartment. I can't do this. <laughs> yeah, that's that's ridiculous. I'm sure I get plenty. Do you know what episode number it is? Um, feels like 97. Yes, it is 97. See, we're on a roll. You uh, of, let's see. I'm doing this. Off, but don't forget the number. Yeah, I'm going to say this early before we get into it officially. This is maybe my favorite clue ever. <laughs> this comes up a lot. Yeah, I'm very excited about this dumb clue. Okay. And I, I'm pretty sure you won't get it, but if you do, that'll be amazing. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> so I'm not even quite sure what I'm looking at. But yes, yep. I'll, yeah. some part of my brain will work on it the whole time. Yep. Oh, my I'll, Lord. A little stroke. So Billy Joel released a new song. Yeah, man. What is it called? Turn the lights back on? Turn the lights back on. Here's a question for you. Do you think some part of him did that because the Beatles coming out with a new song gave him permission to do it? I mean, I bet not. Okay. I think... He probably, you know, there's a good chance he's had this loaded up for a while. Yeah. Maybe the Beatles coming out with a new song gave like the record company the idea to go ahead and do it. Yeah. Um, I'll bet he's sitting on 50 songs. You think so? I think he dorks around and writes little songs all the time. And they probably mostly stink. Or they're mostly for fun or about like some friend of his or something. And then a couple of them, he was like, oh, actually pretty good. Yeah. Hang on to this. I'm going to spin this around the house. I was very pleased that it was, I knew it was going to be a ballad. Sure. Because it would have been so amazing if he came out with a rocker, but there's just, that's not a reasonable expectation from 70 year old thoughtful Billy Joel. Yeah. I don't think the rockers are in him anymore. I also think it's been what 17 years since you released a song and you're the the piano man. The first one's got to be <laughs> you and the piano. Yeah, true. Very true. And, and if, if there are more songs coming, there might be a rocker, but also like you're 74. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, the Stones are older than that, and they're releasing new songs. Yeah, but so the difference between, say, the members of the Stones and Billy Joel is that Billy Joel is self-aware. Yes. And Mick Jagger, you could not, I bet you money, could not embarrass Mick Jagger. Oh, I'm sure it's impossible, yeah. yeah. And I do not mean that as a compliment. <laughs> yeah. I think you should be able to be embarrassed. Um, yes, I think that keeps you in touch with the rest. Of it uh, shows that you have empathy. Yeah. But I also think that because of his job, it happens to work well for him. Yes, you can't be, uh, if you're the front man for that kind of band, you can't have second thoughts. Yeah, <laughs> you got to go all out. You can't go. The the, the, the chicken thing still looks up sexy, does right. it? You guys, am I a good dancer? Yeah. Does the chicken thing look good now that I have chicken fat waddle? Right. Does that look good now? I do a different dance. Maybe I shouldn't dance. Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't. Can it's you stuck. hear the? Can you hear the creaks? Because I can hear them. I can hear my my muscles popping. Can the audience hear that? 
like TMJ. Uh, so I'm very excited. I was legitimately excited that he put out a new song. Legit yeah. I gotta say, it was not even a thing that I was like hopeful about. Yeah. Like, oh, that's it's over. And yeah. Then, but he was like, hey, new song. I was like, what? Great. Yeah. That's a great bonus. Yeah, I made peace with that a long time ago. I remember, so I remember this as a kid. I remember when Steve Martin stopped doing stand up and being mad. Oh, sure. And then later on realizing, oh, you got to stop sometime. That's good. Okay. Yeah. So then when Billy Joel stopped, I was like, well, that's disappointing because I think he could probably make a couple more albums, but he don't want to. So fine. <laughs> right. So who am I to put that on him? Yeah. So what I read, I, so here's something I read is that at a concert where he makes every concert, he makes the same joke, which is I got good news and bad news. The bad news is there's no new music. The good news is there's no new music. But I guess at one concert, he had said, there's no new music. Although we are kind of working on something. He had <laughs> okay. So there was something in the wind. And I wonder if that's actually what happened. I wonder if he was noodling with the band and had a stroke of inspiration and not a stroke, which is great because you're 70. <laughs> <laughs> And he just went, oh, crap, maybe this is something. Yeah, that's a good chance. You know, you, you're... We shouldn't get into the lyrics because we're going to do it probably next week. Yeah, we'll see what <laughs> you pick. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. Yeah, <laughs> I, I hope you do because actually that would be really good to talk about. Also, I don't think we've done it. Yes, we should check check your spreadsheet. Yeah, I'm not positive, but I don't... <laughs> You just write the song on the wall of your cell. Yeah. Episode, right? Yeah, that's right. Oh, Lord, I'm going to be here a while. Um, you know, both of us know the songs we for sure haven't done, which I find very funny. Yes, I can think of one for sure. There's two for sure. Okay, yeah. And, yes. they're, and they're both similar in that we're like, well... I guess at some point we'll have to say this. One of them is the last episode. We know that. Yes. And that'll be the... Probably a yeah. two-parter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But and one of them, just one of us is eventually going to have to pull the trigger on and just go, okay, we'll talk about it. Just we'll yeah. talk about this goddamn song. <laughs> <laughs> um, and oddly enough, the songs that we're most reticent to talk about, for good reason, are very popular. They're very yeah. well songs. It's for good reason. And also that's kind of why they're hard to talk about. Yeah, true. Um, they're almost there's you've heard them so many times. Yeah. You know, when you say a word a bunch of times and it loses meaning. Yes, absolutely. Um, why am I saying office? Office <laughs> or office. It's, it's that phenomenon. Yeah, for sure. Um, there, uh, Billy Joel's offering, by the way, a seven inch collectible vinyl. Great. And it's a great thing to get if you've always wanted to give Billy Joel 30 more dollars. Yeah, it was perfect. Uh, my birthday is coming up in March. Perfect for me. Yep. Also uh, get my record player. Get you a record player too. Yeah. <laughs> and somewhere to put it would be great. I have a lot of needs. Yeah, a lot of needs related to this one damn record. <laughs> I'm going to need a new apartment. Um, yeah. in. Uh, we haven't recorded in a while, by the way, because I got sick again. What'd you get? You had the laryngitis. Yeah, I had that. My voice was gone. I'm pretty sure I had some version of COVID. Okay. Although I this time I didn't test for it because I'm so exhausted with stuff. That it was, <laughs> I'll just stay home and it's fine. And who cares? It doesn't, what am I, what's the information do for me? Nothing. Yeah. The quarantine period is down to like one day now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you can't come out till four. Yeah. That's the new rule. <laughs> right. I had brain fog and I'll tell you something uh, about the brain fog. It is not helpful as a comedian. Oh. Particularly if you're saying a joke that has a reference in it. 
and you <laughs> realize you've said the wrong thing. Oh, boy. So you're saying a joke, and you meant to say, let's say, you made a joke about Jay, Jay Leno for some reason. And uh -huh. then you're like, you remember guys I ever remember watching that uh, when, when Estelle Getty used to host The Tonight Show? And everyone's <laughs> just confused, and you don't know why the joke's not working. And it's a great idea, but that didn't happen. <laughs> why are you mad at Estelle Getty? And then when you finally realize it's you can't fix it. Yeah, and then you're you're embarrassed inside your head. Oh, destroyed. Absolutely destroyed. I, audience. I effing hate that so much. Say the wrong oh, and it's it's like always the word that matters the most. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have this issue with uh, our host. <laughs> the word that matters the most is the one he can't say <laughs> it stumbles over we had a joke about uh, there was a horse in Florida that tested positive for methamphetamine and he kept saying meta-amphetamine <laughs> it's like you have to it's just methamphetamine he's like but there's an A there I'm like you're saying the A it's not meta it's meth methamphetamine and then he just bonked it. Like, it's a perfectly, it's so hard to put a joke together. Yeah. And then you finally get one scraped together and it's like, you can't say the word. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad that 90% of my act is just made up of things that don't require that level of specificity. Like there's specificity, but it's not, oh, you have to know you know, this thing about Schindler's List or whatever. Yeah. You know, my group, Schindler's List. Yeah. Oh, Shiza. I'll tell you what I picked if I remind, remind, remind people. Uh, I picked the three uh, songs without lyrics. That's what we decided to do. That's a, the, the level of difficulty here is stunning because, you know, the name of the show. Yeah. Jim and Alex discuss. <laughs> no, it's Alex and Jim. Alex we and Jim. We analyze. Alex well, that's the other podcast. Jim and Alex discuss songs without lyrics. <laughs> that's the yeah, that's the other one. Yeah. Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics. I will say that the shape of these lyrics is nebulous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. They are everywhere and nowhere at the same that's time. That's right. They're like uh, Schrodinger's cat. You will <laughs> open up the box and there will will or will not be lyrics. Yeah. But until you open it, they both are there and are not there. They exist in potential. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know why I wanted to do this, but <laughs> that's fine. But let, let which, one, <laughs> which one do you want to talk about first? Because I made notes so I'd have something to say. Oh, good. Yeah, so I at least have something. Let's take, what's your take on Nocturne? Oh, yeah. So here's what I find is it's very sleepy. Nocturne is hard to listen to without taking a nap. Yeah, it's good napping tunes, but it's a lovely little melody. It's very pretty. And I think Nocturne is a classical music term. Like well, let's classical music term for a type of uh, music, like a type of piece of music. What does not knock turn mean? Night. Something to do with nighttime, as in nocturnal. Female name of American origin that means of the night. Well, there you go. It's meant to put you to sleep. <laughs> what is nocturne? A work that suggests the atmosphere of night, ideas of calm, mystery, or moonlight. Oh, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, that's exactly nailed it, Bill. Yeah, it's very pretty, but unlike the other two uh, that we'll talk about, I wouldn't listen to it very often. Yeah, and the other two I could right now sort of hum. But yeah. I don't think I could tell you how Nocturne goes. 
Yeah, and without having actually researched this, because why would you bother? Um, do you think Nocturne sounds like maybe it's a a uh, play on a different classical piece? It feels very classical to me. Yes, could very easily be. I'm sure he's referencing specific composers. I think so. I think this is him. Beyond my grasp. I think this is him letting you know, hey, I'm smart. I know stuff. And it's, what album, is it on uh, the first one? It's So the other two uh, that we picked are on the same album. This is on a different one. Nocturne. I think it's on Cold Spring Harbor. Yeah. Okay. Um, which also suggests, oh, I need a song. Yeah. What about that I've been in with? It is on Cold Spring Harbor. You're right. <laughs> By the way, the first. <laughs> Very first album out of the gate. He's out of lyrics. <laughs> yeah. By the way, so I Googled just Nocturne Billy Joel album. Yeah. And there's this thing called Billy Joel is back for an encore. But why did he wait so long? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so great. His fans are as big a dicks as he is. Just like you can't yeah. let the guy enjoy putting out a song. Right. Good news. He yeah, put out news. Yeah. Oh, you guys. Oh, you guys are amazing. Who's causing trouble? Okay, hold on. Wendy, it's you. Oh, I'm sorry. Whoa. Wendy was causing trouble. She just wanted outside. Um, yeah, uh, Nocturne is fine. I have less opinions about Nocturne than the other two. But other than to say that it's it's pretty, there's nothing wrong with it. But I think you're right. I think he just needed to fill the quota. I suspect, yeah. Or he just couldn't come up with any good lyrics. To you know what, though? I had this thought, too. I wonder if he suffered from the same thing that a lot of creative people suffer from where um, like when I did sketch comedy a lot, I remember thinking, let's have a musical act perform at our sketch show. Because uh -huh. it'll be like Saturday Night Live or whatever I thought. Uh -huh. And and we and I book a band or a or a solo musician who could do stuff. And all that would happen is that that person would come out, they play their very nice song, and the audience would just be confused as to why this had just happened to them. Yes. And I think, well, I still thought that was a good idea. Well, yeah, you always do. So I wonder <laughs> if that's that where he's like, oh, you know, you know what people want on a rock album? Take a break and just hear a classical piece. And you're like, no, nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. Yeah, it may be. He's like, a, I think he was raised on like piano lessons. And I'm sure lots of classical pieces. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to teach these uh, rock and roll fans a little something. Yeah. Um, it, <laughs> first album out of the gate. It reminds me, uh, I have a friend, uh, the great Drew, who um, took a massage course, learned how to become a, you know, a certified massage therapist. Nice. And within six weeks of graduating from that, he wanted to then make a series of instructional videos <laughs> on massage. It's like you just learned it. Wow! You can't. You can't then turn around and say, "I've got something to teach you." Did he make them? No. 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 To his great like, credit, he didn't do that. <laughs> to his great credit, he had no follow through. That's so funny. Really made me laugh. But you just got here. Wow. Teach people. It is kind of that. Like these uh, Philistines who listen to rock albums. Yeah. To learn about classical. Or maybe he was projecting and just saying like, just so my fans know, in like 35 years, I'm going to release a classical album. Yeah. So get warmed up. By the way, I read a review of his classical album. Yeah. And I think he would have enjoyed this review because one of the reviews said, at least it's better than McCartney's. 
<laughs> wow. It was better than McCartney's classical album. And I'm like, of course it was. McCartney didn't learn music. <laughs> right. Yeah. He didn't have the bass. Yeah, he didn't have a foundation. So he was in that. Huh? I didn't know he did that. Yeah, do McCartney. You, you own it? Oh hell no. Oh <laughs> no. Those are all those are all just mistakes, you know. <laughs> like I don't own a bunch of like I love Elvis, right? I don't yeah. own any of his fucking gospel albums. Fair enough. Yeah. We get a fucking Josh at Fit the Battle and all that horse shit. Jiminy Christmas. <laughs> I don't hear none of that. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to be a fan of everything the fucker does. Yeah. Yeah. And McCartney doing an it's such a just a vanity piece to just do a classical album. Also, what does that even mean? I don't even understand. You know what I mean? Because classical Mozart, when he was composing, wasn't composing classical music. He was yeah. composing music. Right. The music just had a lot of rules. Yeah. And like everything else. Right. And that's what it was. Yeah. So and now we think of that. Yeah, we get, we put it in a genre. Like everything that happened until 1900 goes in one genre. Yes, exactly. That's absurd. I, since like, 1900, there have been 58 genres. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like breaking the rules by making a opera that wasn't in Italian or whatever. That was breaking. The rules. <laughs> right. Right. That was uh, that was punk. Yeah, exactly. Of the era. Yeah. So I don't know. It seems just kind of stupid. So really what you're making is or orchestral music is maybe what you should, you call it that, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, and there's people doing it well, and they're doing it for movies. That's what they do it for. They're doing that. Yep. And that's where it fucking belongs. You yeah. know, if we're doing, if we're seeing a classical concert, we want Mozart. We don't want Billy Joel, and we don't want fucking Paul McCartney. Yeah, none of you new guys. It's yeah, because you're gonna do something that's vaguely like something they already did. Right, because if you don't, it stinks. Yep, that's right. You gotta copy them a little bit to make it sound good. All right, yeah. here's what I I say. We're gonna end on the root beer rag, so we'll go the Mexican. Okay connection and i want to start by asking you why is it called that <laughs> very good question no answer from me it doesn't sound in any way mexican no um this is it's on street life serenade right yeah a lot of la stuff yeah i don't remember if he made that album in la or if he just left la but, you know, Los Angelinos is on there. I think he was enamored with the idea that there were Mexicans in L.A. Which oh, maybe. Not... That... Okay. Long Island. I think he liked it and thought it's exotic. And maybe it's a drug reference. <laughs> maybe it's not. Yeah. The uh, first opening chords, by the way, for that are the same as the opening chords for Catch a Falling Star by Perry Como. And that <laughs> jump, that jumps out on, at me. Wow. Yeah. I'll give it another listen now, because I do know that. Yeah, Catch a Falling Star and put it in your pocket. Save it for really... That's a pretty good Perry Como. Can't afford the music rights. That's right. <laughs> but, and it also, this one is longer than it needs to be uh, maybe it's pretty long it's a lot go a lot of time you listen to this yeah. here. and it, maybe some instrumentation in there that is from latin music that's what i was thinking too there's a slight flavor but there's also it also sounds like a perfect song for a 70s sitcom sure yeah. like Honestly, like Taxi, it's one of those shows. Yeah. Oh my God. True. Yeah. yeah I could just replace the taxi theme with yeah. that. The taxi was in LA. That's right. I don't. Um, I don't really like it, but I don't dislike it. It's fine. It's just I gotta. 
say it's kind of boring, really. It's kind of dull. It's yeah, it's not big in yeah. any way. Which I think if you're gonna do a purely instrumental piece, there's gotta be something that hits you. Yeah. And it's just sort of la la la. I it's is it I guess it's a little moody if that's what it's supposed to be. The real question is the if the show taxi had taken place in LA, what would be different about it? Oh yeah. Um you if the show taxi had taken place in LA, well, first of all, there'd only be like two or three characters because right. people don't take taxis very much. Right. And uh, every other thing would be, yeah, uh, you're picking up a guy at the airport would be every <laughs> other line. Yeah. And he's going to Bakersfield. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you'd be like, you're giving Fiona Apple a ride because she doesn't have a license of her own and she takes taxis everywhere. That's something Jim knows. <laughs> <laughs> and you would still have the guy who's trying to be an actor. Yes. And you probably would still have Jim. Maybe what you'd have is everyone's trying to be an actor and there's one guy who isn't. Right. And then <laughs> he's the crazy one. <laughs> yeah. That, that's the guy. Oh, man. Just in LA to become an accountant. What's your favorite episode of Taxi? Do you have one? You know, I haven't seen an episode of Taxi in so many years. I cannot remember. I, I remember loving the one where uh, Andy Kaufman's character gets bonked on the head and turns into like a Romeo. Right. Yes. That, he turns into like a Casanova character. That's right. He's smooth talking. And it takes forever. Bonked in the head with something. Yep. Yep. My two favorite episodes are gym episodes. One is. They're at a fancy party and he offers to play piano and he just goes gun, gun, gun. And it's very funny because it's obviously Jim doesn't know how to play piano. And then right. at some point he goes, ah, what the hell? And then he plays a classical piece beautifully. <laughs> and then at some point he's like, I, I guess, I guess I know how to play piano. <laughs> ah, that's great. And my second favorite is. When oh. his dad dies. Oh, I don't remember that. Jim's Jim? dad dies. Huh? I don't remember that. And there's an argument over the will because he left everything to Jim. But they managed, to, they, whoever the executor is, manages to wrest control of the estate because Jim's not mentally there. Oh. And, and he kind of gets cheated. And the only thing he gets is a cassette tape that his dad had made for him. And in the very end, he's in his dumb little apartment. He puts the cassette tape in and he plays and it's Stevie wonders. You are the sunshine of my life. And you can tell he's very happy because his father is telling him he loved him from the grave. Wow. Really great. Do you remember there was also an episode where Jim takes the driver's test? No. I bet that was great. Like, like his license expired or something. So they all helped him study for the driving test. Um, and I just remember the one joke where he's like asking, like during the test, he's like asking them about answers. Then he says, what does a yellow light mean? And one of them, slow down. And he goes, okay, what? <laughs> That's what uh, is <laughs> right. When uh, I was a kid, that was a perfect joke. It's still perfect. Still perfect. You're right. He's my favorite character from that show. Latka, whatever. But Jim Ignatowski, because because he's an actual actor and not a lunatic comedian. Yes. He infused so much in that character that you were like, damn, damn, this guy's there's a lot of sadness here, which of course because he's a real actor, underpins yeah. the comedy and makes that even better. Really great. So well, good. Yeah. And that's how much we have to talk about Billy Joel that we're going to talk about Taxi for a while. Hey, man. It's whatever, like, the music makes you think of. And that actually does, yeah. That's the beauty of an instrumental piece. By the way, I listen to them a lot to get ready for this episode. 
<laughs> yeah, try, just trying to find something to fucking talk about. Yes, because I did because it was my idea, so I felt like I should do some homework. And it's the easiest homework to do is listen to it. But then you, I put Nocturne on, and I'd start listening to it, and I go, <laughs> <laughs> and I go, oh, crap, Ugh, let's put Nocturne back That's on. Okay. Let's <laughs> put Nocturne back on, squirt, squirt, squirt. Ugh, okay, okay, you can do this. <laughs> but then put on the Rubir rag, and nobody falls asleep. Oh. I That's love a, that song. Bang. Huh? Bang. It's yeah. a full bang. It's great. Yeah, man. It's, it's, it's exactly what it says it is. Yeah. Completely a rag. It's an old, you'd hear it in an old saloon. It's great. It starts and it twists. And then there's actually singing in it, which I forgot. <laughs> Do you remember the singing? Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, just and whoever put it in the mix was like, we're gonna put this uh, obnoxiously low. Yeah. So you can just barely hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming from the next room. Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, he <laughs> nails it. He nails it. One of the things that happens with a rag is it'll get to a point where you feel like it should stop. And yeah. then doesn't it doesn't it goes to the next level yeah and so finally when you get to the end of it well that's it nope <laughs> well that's gotta be i fucking love that it's great it's, it's the muppet right. show it's <laughs> the muppet show yep it's yep. absolute lunacy it is too bad there's no world in which that's how you get famous. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. No. Like a fucking riverboat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this would be great to get you your job at Disneyland, but yeah. <laughs> but it's good. I really like it. Well, do you have any specific thoughts about it? Any parts that... Um, I remember that uh, Root Beer Rag was the name of his fan magazine. Which you could like write, you had to send away for it. Remember that? <laughs> We're old enough to remember in the days where you would send away for stuff. That's right. Like cereal box tops and stuff. Oh, like, oh yeah. We... Fucking Tony the Tiger Sponge. <laughs> send in 50 box tops and That's... wait for fucking ever. Yeah. And you probably weren't going to get it. it. Um, yep. I That's did right. that many times, and so many times, like our family moved away before the thing ever came. <laughs> That's <laughs> pretty cool. So plastic. You heard the Gary Goldman joke about uh, getting books. How like it, his joke is that nowadays you can just get a book instantly on yeah. your tablet or whatever. And he said, back in my day, uh, the Scholastic Book Club, you gave them a check. A check at the beginning of the school year and you got your book on graduation <laughs> <laughs> that's right <laughs> uh, Same. i highly recommend everybody just constantly look up gary goldman you should listen to him always watch all the clips watch the new special which is great i'll link to that because yeah the new special is great i, I, I love that man the goldman you can yeah, I love that man. He's so funny and he's just a nice fella. So nice. Yeah. He's on our show recently. Oh, great. I don't know if he remembered me, but he definitely acted like he did in passing in the hallway. Like, hey, how you doing, man? I was like, oh, he remembers me. And then I thought, maybe he just does that. And also, it doesn't matter. Yep. <laughs> I bet you he does remember you. Either thing is great. Yeah. Um, if you have not listened to the the uh, root beer rag, Lord, you should. It's it's, all favorite. it's like a good. You should when you wake up in the morning, you should drink a whole glass of water and listen to that song. Yeah. Oh, right to go. wanted to say this. Slide whistle pops up. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Late in the song, so that it's kind of a surprise. As it should be, because you can't, you can't top it. 
Nope. Yeah, so, well. You're deep into the song and you're like, okay, well, they, fantastic. <laughs> it really is nicely mixed. Yeah. Whatever else is going on. Do you think it's a live recording? I wonder. I don't think so. Okay. It's so clean. Yeah. You know, that's one of the things, by the way, not to harp on the new song, but one of the things I like about it is it feels a little ragged. Like his voice is good, but it's not that studio clean. Yes. It's like, oh, he's like doing stuff with his voice and it's just a little shaky here and there and a little ragged. Um, but for Rip Fear Rag, I like that it's tidy. Yeah. Um, and it like ends. Yep, it's it's pretty damn fun. I've seen a live clip of him performing it somewhere. Like that's all I ever seem to find. And and he's bopping around on different little machines to make <laughs> it. It's just pretty fun. Right. Yeah. I guess it's a good thing he didn't do a bunch more of this nonsense, but I really did enjoy it. It's hard to imagine that there he would have like a second rag that was better. Right. <laughs> Oh, it's really good. Yeah, it's quite perfect. And you know what? The 70s was one of the last eras where every now and then an instrumental would become popular. Oh, yeah. It would happen. Like, the Soul yeah. Bossa Nova was a hit. Yeah, it was then in, like, that popcorn song. Oh, yeah. A and couple of bangers. I got a guest cat in the house today. Nice. Oh, is this the Neighbors? thing you yeah. stopped by the other day bonus bonus the cat nice tijuana brass they were actually had hits oh yeah herb alpert yep <laughs> oh yeah spanish flea that's right Sorry. <laughs> yeah man there were quite a few and even in the 80s i think was another hot Era, well, uh, once it? got a synthesizer. Oh, Herbie Hancock. Same. That's right. That's right. Herbie Hancock had a few hits. Rocket. That's right. All right. Look at that. What on earth? Okay. <laughs> Those devices. Yeah, they are kind of. Um, they are, for what you want them to do, they're the ones you'd turn to. and So people love them. Uh, oh. they, they serve a very specific function, and they're named. They're one of those products that I didn't know this is named after what they do, which is what makes this a clue. Oh, my God. Because this people people love this product. So how would you describe something a lot of people loved? Uh, it's popular. Yep, that's how I describe it, exactly that way. Yeah. And uh, people use this for the, it, the the function is the name. If you can figure out the function, you got it. Yep, yep. It's, uh, you know, yeah. you see those little knobs and stuff. and Yeah, they they hold stuff. And you can brace them to keep something a particular way you want to keep it. Was uh in like in a position, yeah, but but also just re you'll really brace it, you'll brace it, yeah, you uh for sure it up, it's real firm and tight, yeah. So it'll keep it'll keep it'll keep it's very popular for what it does, and it keeps these things this. <laughs> You're the fucking worst. I know, I know. You're gonna love this though. Steadies, they really are. <laughs> Those are called steadies. Oh, Brenda and Eddie. They were the popular steadies. That's right. I laughed so hard when I saw a picture of these. It was like, and I just kind of ran into it. I wasn't looking. This was like, those are called steadies. Oh. And that company makes the most popular one. <laughs> the company. Is uh, Steady the name of the company? Yeah, if I get the wrong picture, it actually says steadies on it. <laughs> it would be great if uh, Brenda and Eddie uh, 
owned that company. Oh yeah, that's right. But she, she's much. She's much too lazy though to run a company like that's, that. And he could never afford to live that kind of life. Oh no. <laughs> Popular <laughs> steadies. We're two idiots. <laughs> How stupid is that? That's great, isn't it? Really great. We could call this show Two Idiots. Yeah, that's true. But there's a lot of competition, though, for the Two Idiots. <laughs> the Two Idiots podcast. I'm Someone sure. Is doing that premise. Oh. <laughs> Some of people have been actively, I've been actively living that premise, so certainly. Uh, it's a very confusing trivia question in some ways. I love it. There is a song that is the all-time best-selling instrumental charting instrumental piece, but it has words in it. So I throw it out. That was the Harlem Shake. What is the second best-selling modern instrumental piece? Second best-selling. Number one on the charts. There have been several that went to number one. This is the best-selling of all of them. It's not going to be Herbie Hancock. No, no. I don't think so. I could probably tell you who it is, and you might still not know what it is. Second best-selling instrumental. Mm -hmm. Modern era. Um, According to some random website. Yeah. So it might be wrong. <laughs> well, I'm going to guess Rocket, and then you tell me what it was. Is it Rocket by Herbie Hancock? No. Oh, shoot. Uh, it, was a, it was a piece by Jan Hammer. Ugh. Does that help you know what it is? No. It was a theme song from a TV show. Oh. In the 80s. Oh, Miami Vice? Miami Vice. Okay. Well, then I kind of got it. Miami Vice. Um, don't yourself a favor. <laughs> <laughs> we listened to it and I was like, oh, this isn't good. Yeah. It just was uh, the most popular TV show. That's all. It was popular because of that. And that's stupid. Like, oh, this is as without the show. It's just <laughs> boring synthesizers. Yeah. It's well. And. Why would you, there's only ever been a few songs from a TV show that you would ever actually want to listen to because that's not the job of the song of a TV show. Yeah. In fact, by definition, the song has to not be in the way. Yeah. The taxi theme is eminently listenable. Yep. Um, Welcome Back Cotter is strangely a really good song. Sure. The Bosom Buddies theme. Love that song. Yeah, the Buds and Buddies thing. That's a great one. We should cover that sometime. <laughs> well, let's look back and see if we've done it. Uh, we did it episode one. Oh, he said. Yeah, I got a call from an old friend. He used to be real close. Yeah. That's what that, yeah. Yeah, they're a lot of great. The Friends song was great. Yes. Have you heard, heard the whole Friends song where yes. you hear some of the lyrics that you haven't heard in a while and you're like, ah, I'd just rather hear the TV version of this. I've been properly conditioned. Yeah, I don't need to hear it. When you go to church on Christmas and they get to like the fourth and fifth verse of some Christmas song. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't care about this. Yeah, or like, or the Star Spangled Banner where you, there's an extra verse and you're right. like, oh, yeah, this one's real racist. That's pretty great. <laughs> right. Forgot yeah. that this song was originally pretty horrific. Yeah, like the country. Yeah, wow. I mean, it's appropriate, but I don't know that I want to sing this. <laughs> Not for me. All right. Oh. So what song did you pick for next week? Well, for next week, I picked off of uh, no album in particular, as far as I know. Um, turn the lights back on. Turn the lights back on. And I, and I will just say this. There are meaty lyrics in this. It's really... Worthy of examination. For sure. Yeah. She sounds pretty good. It's about two things at the same time. Yeah. It's long, but not too long. It's longer than a 
than a radio edit song. So it's, I think he just did a song exactly as long as he wanted to do because he don't got to worry about that anymore. God bless. Oh, the seven inch vinyl, by the way, on side one is turn the lights back on. Uh -huh. uh, side two is turn the lights back on. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Enjoy my $30, Billy Joel. You earn it, man. Yep. <laughs> Turn the damn lights back on.